I have in the studio in front of me another fabulous guest, and she looks so young. You are like a little oh, doll. You look at you. But you are. You look about twenty-one. Oh, those are the days. Television doesn't do you justice. You know? Mock the week doesn't do you any justice. <laughs> Gosh, I, I, I was about twenty-one when I first came. I was eighteen really? when I first came to the Fringe. Yeah. Wow. And it's aged me. I tell you, the uh, the experience of the Edinburgh Festival it puts it puts about ten years on. I think it has not aged you. But I will. <laughs> I will just say, in case you're thinking, hang on, I recognise the voice. Uh, welcome to. Studio the wonderful Lucy Porter. Hello, it's and, lovely to be here. And uh, Jane Lee, thank you for coming in. How are you finding it? How are you settling into the festival? Oh, lovely. I mean, do you know what? I only spend a month in Edinburgh every year, but since I've been doing it for about 25 years, uh, it's like I've never been away. So I just turn up and I'm like, yep, yeah, there we go. I'll just pop into, I've just been into John Lewis, picked up a shopping. few bits. Yeah. For and, the kids. Uh, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so now I kind of, I, I come up with the kids and, uh, uh, you know they're they're discovering the festival so it's all very exciting for them and i feel like i'm the old timer who's showing everyone around now no not at all you did take a couple of years out didn't you to because your kids are qu- they're quite close together in yeah age. well they're four and five now but so yes yeah, so i had a little bit of time off to uh, pop those out uh, <laughs> just get that done as one does and, uh, and now i'm back yeah well it's it's a brilliant place to come with kids as well because i thought oh is that the end of my edinburgh festival going because in the olden days edinburgh to me used to be you would come up to edinburgh for a month and stay out drinking until five o'clock in the morning and you know never see bed and uh, I thought oh dear how am I going to do it with children but it turns out there's a whole other festival I didn't know about which starts at 10 o'clock in the morning for the young ones so it's been fantastic. Or have your kids been dragging you to that or have you? No well I have been kids? dragging them if anything like we've been going to, we went, to get enough? we went to Monsky Mouse's baby disco and I was the one dancing they were sat on the side just watching going oh mum you're so embarrassing and I was uh, you know doing strutting my stuff so uh, and we went to a th- theatre workshop at the Pleasance this morning and uh, we're going to a magic show this afternoon so I love it I absolutely love the kids shows well I think you'll embrace yourself I think once you're in yeah. the festival it's you there's so much to pick and let's focus in fact on your show actually oh. consequences it is the well the consequences of what I've done is I've ended up with two kids you know so uh, I'm very very alive to consequences at the moment uh, and it's uh, yeah so it's a show I was going to call it a midlife crisis this show but I've decided it's a midlife celebration show so oh, that's a nice play on words. Looking back, looking forward, contemplating what my life has become. So, uh, but it's quite funny. So, what do you <laughs> sort of mainly talk about in this show? I've got a letter to my sixteen-year-old self, and I talk about how I've let my sixteen-year-old self down, and how disappointed my sixteen-year-old self would be in me, in that I didn't marry Morrissey, and I didn't move to America, and I didn't do all the things I thought I would do. So, uh, it's a kind of it's an exploration of that. I also do some very silly dancing, and I have a hostess. Trial full of sherry and bonbons. You can tell that you just love doing what you do from watching you and listening to you on radio and television. Is there ever a point where you think, I don't want to do this anymore? Well, no, luckily enough, that was kind of when I had the kids. I think I just got to the point where I was like, oh, I'm a bit tired. So what I'll do is I'll have two children because that will make me less tired. <laughs> I was a fool. I was a fool. But it has, uh, it's reinvigorated me, actually. Having a couple of years off uh, was really good. Has it changed? Obviously, this show, Consequences, is about what you've just said. But would you say it's changed your outlook on, on comedy or on, on what you're delivering, your act? I think I, I am just a bit more tired and I care a bit less. So I think before I had kids, I used to be, uh, I used to get stage fright a bit. I used to get really nervous and now you know this is basically just opportunity for me to have an hour or so away from the children (laughs) much as I love them it means I get an hour on stage where I just talk to people and they have to listen which is great I think it sounds like there's a lot of learning in your show if if I had to take away what would you say to someone coming to your show if they take away one thing from your show what would it be oh well definitely the uh the take the take home message of my show is uh that life the big issues in life aren't black and white and they can't be boiled down to 140 characters oh I love that. I know. I've... To be honest, I should admit those words were actually said by Michelle Obama at the Democrat convention, but apparently it's all right to steal her stuff because uh, Melania Trump did it. So, uh, <laughs> so yes, yeah, so that's my lesson. Nothing's original unless we edit all of that out and then you, <laughs> you own those words. How yeah, good exactly. would that be? But it's live. What can I say? <laughs> Listen, Porter, please check out our show, Consequences, and it's at the Pleasance Fourth at 5.30. Thank you so much for having me. Such a pleasure to talk to you. Oh, you too. Cheers. <laughs>